it is reasonable for parents to expect in sending their, their, their sons and daughters to the University of Notre Dame to expect that the intellect is developed and nourished here as disciplinary expertise comes to be possessed and their daughters and sons during that experience will encounter at least some minds that have worked at the integration of Catholic faith and reason that are informed and sympathetic to the Catholic tradition. The most important challenge Catholic universities face is to find ways to recruit Catholic intellectuals and other faculty members who are committed to the august tradition of faith-seeking understanding. Faith is not something that as an institution we say we might discover. Faith is an assumption that the institutional assumption that is our common ground and, and we seek to learn about it and to develop ourselves, ourselves in it. Hypothetical case one, uh, there's a search committee or seven or eight. Uh, the, uh, uh, you're, you're trying to work a list of 10 to 15 finalists who have emerged from studying the files to work that down to three or four people to bring to campus. And so seven or eight faculty members are sitting around the table together and uh, a faculty member raises in committee the concern that we ought to really get into the final three or four a good if not an entire representation of Catholics because we, we haven't been hiring enough. And of course, this group of seven or eight is composed of faculty, many of whom that were hired in the last 20 years. So after faculty member A makes this plea, another faculty member speaks and says, well, uh, look around the table. Have we done badly in our hires? Isn't this the kind of thing that we want to do? It's, it's very, very hard for faculty who have been selected under the process of recent years, often in, those, in, those, in that period when religious identity questions have been winked at or they've been told informally that isn't too critical when they came aboard, very, very hard for them to give priority to the matter now at this time. Uh, now that person who, uh, uh, who spoke to faculty member A might or might not have been a non-Catholic on the committee. I say might or might not have been because sometimes the people most adamantly opposed to giving attention to the Catholic dimension are people who are formally Catholics uh, but uh, don't think it should interfere in any way with the academic mission of the university. So uh, th th they will be counted in the percentages as Catholics. They will sign on as such, but they, they will be opposed to the, the proposal of this faculty member A in the context of the committee I just described. And I have colleagues now who are serious Lutherans who join in this process uh, and, and welcome any association with the Catholic identity. So we have to be attentive to these dimensions of it. I would say, on balance, non-Catholics who are faithful to their own traditions are much more supportive of any efforts to turn this around than Catholics, nominal Catholics are, or Catholics who, who don't take their own traditional upbringing very, very seriously. A further observation on the interview process. It's perfectly legal. Uh, and, and the university uh, doesn't ban it in any way. Some of my colleagues are very sensitive to it, but it's perfectly legal to make inquiries about religious affiliation and to have a discussion of, of the nature of that religious commitment. And I think any turning around that we do is going to have to involve uh, more embracing by the administration of the kind of interview techniques that will give us a sense as to whether a person is really prepared to make a commitment uh, to the mission of this particular university. What is it that gets the applicant pool down, you might say? What gets the applicant pool down to the fact that you get a finalist in which three or four are non-Catholics and the fourth one is, was raised a Catholic? 
and uh, another uh, true life scenario. That is, uh, if uh, a very bright young Catholic student, let's say coming out of a fine Catholic liberal arts college, decides specifically because of Catholicism to go to an institution, let's say like Notre Dame for graduate study, or Fordham, uh, or St. Louis University, and comes out with their PhD and is competing with a Harvard or Yale PhD uh, in the sorting through the applicant pool, a f large percentage of my colleagues will say, that's not the kind of degree that's going to carry clout in the ratings. Uh, and, and so uh, this is why sometimes very, very good Catholic candidates are marginalized in that process. Uh, or it may be something that will turn up on their CV that will end, indicate that they're really a committed Catholic, that they, they actually put it on their CV, and yet they have an uh, Ivy League degree. And that is uh, not to be, likely not to be welcomed by a number of my colleagues. So you, you might ask yourself then, and is, uh, does pursuing the Catholic mission and hiring mean some setback to the aspirations of the university to raise its ranks in terms of academic quality, to become ever more a first-tier research institution. I think there are tensions there. Uh, that uh, there are, t because this, this is simply why. The standards we are being judged by are not the standards informed by or touched by Catholicism in any way. If, if, our, if our rankings depend not on the kind of qualities of mind and soul, devotion to teaching that m may mark the young faculty, but on whether they have the right paper trail that will impress evaluators in terms of ranking uh, the department and the university as a whole at this point. And that uh, we need, as became so clear from uh, Father Miss Campbell's presentation, we need trustee and administrative leadership. There are good things that are being done. We have a president of the university deeply committed to doing something on this issue. Uh, we, we need to address some really tough issues that involve the faculty. That is, the character of faculty searches and the willingness of administrative leaders to extend those searches while the search for Catholics goes on or to reject searches that haven't given good faith attention to looking for Catholics. In those searches, we have to utilize an interview process which is sensitive to the seriousness of the commitment to the mission of the university and regards, is prepared to weigh that when the final decision is made on the appointment. And I do think in, uh, in the search process, as the applicant pool is winnowed down with many faculty reading many applications, there may be in certain departments the need for some administrative oversight on uh, what is, uh, on how that winnowing down goes and what happens to the Catholic candidates in the pool. This is a critical issue with more crises looming down the road if we don't turn it around. I mean, the vagina monologues was a revealing incident, as has been pointed out. But uh, there, down, the lo down the road are possible questions about the philosophy theology requirement the presidency of the university being tied to the Holy Cross community, the role of the fellows in the Holy Cross community there, the, the number of Catholic programs that exist with the blessing of the administration now on campus and the great percentage of entering students who are Catholics. All of those are potential points of attack for a faculty that becomes ever more secular and, and, and becomes a look-alike faculty to other faculties in the, in, in the United States. So we return to uh, Notre Dame's critical difference and to those fine words that Father Miss Campbell quoted from Father Jenkins that 
if we're to make a difference, we have to uh, pay some attention to remaining different. And it's, it's interesting, you know, that I, I've been very interested in thinking about American pluralism and what that means. I believe that uh, American pluralism, the diversity of our land, is enriched if there's authentically Catholic universities and, and that they don't all come to look alike and represent the same thing, top tier, middle tier, bottom tier. But is there a distinctive one or few that we could call an authentically Catholic university? Thanks for your interest in this.